how to make snow globes. So this is the first time I tried making snow globes and um, had some mistakes and I wanted to share that with everybody so I could save you the headache of making these. It's not as easy as you think it would be. I thought it would be. You could use mason jars, but I um, was fortunate enough that tis the season for um, snow globes. It's November and Michael's, my local craft store, had these. So uh, basically these were $9.99, the big ones, and the smaller ones were $6.99. And they were, f I mean, it is expensive, $10, it's just plastic, whoops. But they put 40% off so you could feel good about your purchase. Um, and so that basically comes out to $6. And um, these were $6.99. So these are more closer to $4. So um, I have four kids, so I had to buy. Well, I wanted to buy one for everybody in my family, for, four for my kids and one for me and my husband. And that we could have like our own thing each. So um, I thought these would be keeping it waterproof for at least a little bit, not permanently, but it wasn't even doing that. Um, so it plugs up, tipped it over, and there was always some water leaking out. You definitely need to glue this when you're done and you have your final product. The other materials I needed were... Um, and this is what the test is about. I was using most of the blogs and tutorials and all the DIY info there. I usually say glycerin, vegetable glycerin. I got this at Rite Aid. They also actually have that at Michael's in uh, the baking section, the frosting section. And I heard baby oil. Um, for me, this was a long shot, but why not? This, I got this at the dollar store. And just clear school glue. This was generic. This was at Michael's uh, versus uh, the Elmer's glue, which was a dollar or more. And I didn't see why I'd pay more for brands. And um, the other things you'd need would be the figurines. And the something to consider is when you're working with plastic versus I would say this is your typical figurine, and I think it's made of ceramic. I'm not sure, I, or clay, or I'm not the expert with making fig figurines, but just so you have an idea um, of what I'm talking about. Now, when you're handling with plastics, it I don't know if it was the glue I used, okay, because um, when I got this at the dollar store, it has a base, a mirror base, and I glued that onto the plug and I used super glue a lot of people were saying use E6000 and I just wasn't needing to buy an entire tube just to, for this project and I have tons of super glue why not use this and I didn't have this available so I didn't want to wait to go to the store the next day because I was doing this project at nighttime and I had this on hand and they want you to um, glue it on and wait for it to cure for 24 hours. So I needed to get to this activity right away, so I went with this. Now a couple things I didn't think about was A, the figurines being plastic and um, what the glue would do to it if I wasn't careful and I wasn't thinking about it. I just put, I thought I was being careful, and I put enough glue, but I put extra glue on the bottom. And you know how crazy glue is. If it doesn't have full contact to adhere with something, then it doesn't really dry properly. Um, so it stayed a little, some parts had some wet areas, and I wasn't thinking about that. So I didn't notice till the next day, following morning, A, what, what I did was I put the glue on like this. And before I went to bed, I just kind of covered them like this just to protect them and to let people know, like, don't mess with this. 
but some CSI stuff really happened and I've seen this on movies where they use crazy glue to um, expose fingerprints and it's real it really does work I wasn't happy about it not as excited as I sound right now but there were my white marks all around here where my fingerprints were and I actually had some a little bit um, I want to say um, a little bit inside but because this was plastic it discolored the figurine and there were these marks all over it it's kind of like if you poured acetone you know nail polish polish remover over something plastic and that's what happened to these two I was pretty bummed about that um, so that's a another warning if you want to use this but in the future I would not use it um, if you really want the professional stuff you don't want it messing with um, the mixture uh, I don't know if that was a factor when I used my stuff. Now, I mean, the point of using these things is really to add some, they're more viscous, so they have this thicker consistency than water, which allows, it allows your glitter to stay suspended. So... Comparing these three, I will tell you this first was an absolute disaster. Now, if you're making something just homemade out of, um, you know, a mayonnaise jar and just want to amuse your three-year-old um, and you don't really care about results, well, then you just want something handy, baby oil, throw in some glitter and water and good to go. But if you want something that looks really professional, stay away from this stuff. It basically, the glitter stuck to the plastic. It adhered to it. So even when you shook it, the liquid would mix, but the glitter would stay stuck on the plastic. So it uh, basically, you know, obstructs your view and unlike here see how it uh, it settles and it's clear it would just glitter all over here and then just like how oil just stays at the surface it would just globs of glitter and oil on top and when you shook it you would just see blobs it was terrible I don't know if it's because of the baby oil it just says mineral oil and fragrance I don't know if that is what um, was the issue that brand I got this at the dollar store I honestly don't think that is the case I think it was just because it's oil um, I would stay away from that um, now I really thought this was gonna be the one I would prefer and at first it was cuz I did this globe with glue and this with this, the glycerin. And for some reason, I thought at first they had the same effect. And the only thing I saw initially, the difference was I had bubbles when using this one, like foamy bubbles. So I was kind of surprised about that. And I said, oh, I don't like that. And, but later on, <laughs> I had, this is a trial and error. My first mistake when I did um, this with the glycerin was also the color of the glitter. My son kind of didn't like the way it blended. It was, the pinks was too strong and the biggest problem we had was I'm not sure if it had anything to do with the super glue or if it was all about the glycerin. The glitter would just settle all over the plastic. It would be stuck to the plastic. So you could not see the colors on the butterfly, on the stem, the blues. 
the pink on the rose and you could not see the green on the leaf at all. It just was this clump of glitter, no matter how much you shook it. So I decided to just wash it out, start over, and I had a bowl and I just experimented. So I would suggest before you even get to doing your final stuff, get another container and just mix stuff, test it, you know, and a little goes a long way. It's easier to add a little of glitter at a time um, and just keep mixing. That's what I would do. I have this one here and I would just add a little bit, kind of like you're cooking something and see how adding a little bit of color changes the effect. So I would practice with that. And with all the trial and error batches I made, I really noticed that, boy, the, the glitter really stays suspended with this glue. So I have no idea if it was um, um, the super glue had any effect on it, but I can tell you that I'm really happy with this. So I started with, you know, I even tried from one tablespoon of glycerin, I doubled up, I tripled up, and it really, for me, didn't compare to the results of the clear glue. I was able to use a tablespoon, two tablespoons, and even three, and um, I really liked the results with this. It's pretty forgiving. It's not like if you add one more tablespoon, it just too much, it messes it up. Um, by the end, I was just not even measuring. I was just pouring it in. So now when you try to put this in, I would suggest, so you wait till everything cures, you have to glue this because without it, it will leak. Now my suggestion is the first time I tried it, I just put the glue all around it don't do that because it squeezes the glue out and it gets this big messy glue all over. Uh, I would also suggest put this on a base, something to support it. You could use, um, you know, uh, I use a sauce bowl. That's what I have here, like a candy dish bowl to hold your globe because you really need two hands when you're putting the figuring in. in. So you want to fill the water just up to the line where you know this ends, because that also makes a difference with how much air is going to be in your globe. So the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the water filled up. I will show you in a little bit the three globes I have and how the difference in how much bubbles each one has. So the key thing is put the glue just around here at the beginning because once you push this in, it will push the glue out. And that's why I re recommend you need two hands to do it steady like this. And what happens is sometimes the water will squirt out depending if you filled it a little too much. And actually it's still okay, just not that it's gushing. But even if a little bit squirts out, as it happened with me, the, the main thing is keeping the glue from getting all over the place. And it's really easy to actually get glue on your hand and not realize and be touching this to try to um, make sure you get the cap on properly. So have it supported two hands and steady it on and have like a paper towel ready to wipe your hands and try to wash it as much as possible. And make sure you get a tight seal. And just kind of like maybe if you have any excess, be careful. Um, it's okay if you get some past it. That's okay. But if it's like spilling out, you would want to wipe that. Because what happens is you kind of let it dry a little bit. And when you cap this and you close it tight, some of that E6000 will 
beyond this to sort of um, seal it as well. If that's what you want, if you don't want that, then I would say let it dry out that uh, this way and cure. And then you can add this. But because I have no intentions of opening this, um, I want it to stay that way for good. I already put the cap on immediately. So the things, uh, the bubbles on top. This one has the biggest bubble. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm going to have to hold my MacBook over it. I don't know if you can see. Okay, I'm going to have to one hand this. See the bubble on this it's one? It's 9 o'clock. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Everything's going off on all my electronic devices because it's uh, at the hour. Okay, so that has a really big bubble. Smaller bubble. And I was surprised I was able to get out as much air out of this one. It has the smallest one. Frankly, I think it's... I like it with the le least amount of bubble in it, but it's not always exactly easy to do that. The other thing I wanted to let you know, when you're mixing your glitter, some of it's gonna clump and get go to the top. Now, I suggest personally that even as I keep adding, I will mix it. Whatever gets clumped up on the top, just fish it out. Get a paper towel, fish it out, and tap it, and then mix again and whatever clumps up. Because it's harder to break that up when it's already clumped up together. And it's easier to just fish it out. So um, even when you take all that out and then you um, later change your mind, you add more glitter, there will still be some clumping on, on the top. So I recommend that just until you get to your final product, just um, um, stir, stir, stir. And before you seal everything, make sure you remove every clump that you see as much as possible. And the other thing is when you have a bubble, the glitters tend to kind of collect at the top. It's actually cool on some, uh, some of them kind of cool right there see some of them kind of collect at the top and you may not like that but um, it's all about trial and error and see what you prefer and some people are okay with the bubble but the end result is I love the way the blues are on this isn't that amazing I think it's just gorgeous Just like beautiful fireworks. I used um, this one. I had more green, some blues, and really the whites are really nice and silver and some specks of gold actually on that one. This one was mostly white, the deep blue, like flag blue, and the white glitter. And um, did I say silver? So, okay, guys. And this one, my daughter wanted um, more whites on this one. There isn't as much color. But experiment, it's all trial and error, but I'm really, really thrilled the way these turned out. And I hope this helped someone. So good luck with your snow globes. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a message if you guys need any um, help with your globes. And have a great day, guys. Bye.